Today we're going to learn about pronouns, specifically thinking about person and number. As a quick review, a pronoun is any word that replaces a noun in a sentence. Examples are we, our, them, you, yours, us, I, etc. We're going to also be using the word antecedent a lot in this lesson, so it's important that you understand what an antecedent is. An antecedent is a fancy word for the noun that the pronoun is replacing. So for example, in this sentence, Carl put his backpack down on the table. We could also write this sentence as Carl put Carl's backpack down on the table, but we want to replace that Carl with the pronoun his. So that word Carl is the antecedent. We also can see this in this sentence. When the kids went outside, they got really cold. They is replacing the noun kids. So kids and Carl in these situations are antecedents. They are the noun that is being replaced. So we've reviewed pronouns, we've reviewed antecedents. We are now going to review the different cases of pronouns. Um, this should be familiar to you because this is in our first lesson with pronouns. But remember that pronouns have three different cases. They have the subjective case, which replaces the subject in a sentence. They have the objective case, which replaces the object in a sentence. And then we have the possessive case, which shows ownership of something. For this lesson, we also need to understand person categories. So there are three person categories. When we're talking about that, we are talking about the terms first person, second person, and third person. You've probably heard this mentioned in your literacy classes before. So each category, first person, second person, and third person, has specific pronouns that we use. Whether the noun is re it's replacing is singular, meaning it's just one, Thing, or is plural, meaning two or more. In order to figure out if a pronoun is used correctly based on its person and number, we first have to identify the person and the number that matches a pronoun's antecedent, so the noun that it's replacing. I do want to mention that for our case and purposes, we aren't going to be working very much with second person. It does come up, but not nearly as frequently as first and third person. So we are going to be focusing only on first and third person when we are dealing with pronouns. So let's review third and first person. So first person is the character that is telling the story. Some examples of first person are Cal in our book, Two Roads. Cal is telling the story. It's from his perspective. So he is in first person. Cal uses the word I, me, my, which also shows us that it is being told in first person. To help you remember this, think about the video game Minecraft. So Minecraft is a first person video game. It's called a first person video game because when you are playing as a character, you are that character and you see things through that character's eyes, through that character's perspective. It is first person. That brings us to third person point of view. So when it, a story is told in third person, the person that is telling it isn't directly involved in the story. So these are when you're going to look for those words, he or she, as signal words for third person. So if we think about two roads, everyone except Cal and two roads is written in third person. They are not telling the story themselves. Cal is seeing them and is telling us what they are doing. The story is not told from their point of view. To help you remember this, you might wanna think about the video game Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing is considered a third person game because you're not playing the game through the character's eyes. You are still seeing the story unfold, but you're seeing it from above. You're not seeing things through that character's vision. Okay, so let's practice this. We have the sentence here. We are going to go through a, several steps to figure out what pronoun we would put in this space. Gail shakes blank 
head. Powers that be are not taking kindly to all those former doughboys setting up camp so close to the White House. The first question we are going to ask ourselves here is what is the case of the missing pronoun? In this case, Gail shakes blank head. So it's the head of Gail. So that tells us that this is possessive. Gail is owning the head. Next, we're going to figure out what is the antecedent. So what is the noun that we are replacing? Whose head is it? It's Gail's head. Gail is our antecedent here. Next, we need to figure out is Gail first person or third person? And what's the number? So is Gail a one, one person or is Gail multiple people? Well, Gail is third person. We know that because it says Gail. Um, Gail isn't telling this story from her perspective. Somebody else is telling it for her. Um, and then it's singular because Gail is only one person. We can now figure out what is the correct pronoun for this sentence. The correct pronoun for the sentence would be her, his, or their, depending on Gail's gender. Now, Gail is a character in two roads. So if you didn't, rem if you remembered that Gail was a character in two roads, you might remember that Gail was a female. If you didn't remember um, that Gail was female, you might use one of these other pronouns, but her, his, or their would be the correct pronoun for this sentence. While we're talking about gender and pronouns, we're going to take a really quick second to talk about this. So in traditional standard English, pronouns that refer to a singular or one person were typically, if that person was male, we would use he, him, and his. If that person identified as female, we would use she, her, and hers. However, to be more inclusive of a variety of gender identities, we can also use the gender neutral they, them, theirs to refer to a single person. They, them, theirs is usually used in standard English to refer to multiple or plural um, number, but it can be used in a singular sense. In fact, they, them, and theirs has been used as uh, a singular, singular pronouns for quite a while. And we would typically use these in, as singular pronouns when the gender of the person we were talking about was unknown to us. So if we didn't know whether, or we didn't know their gender identity. So these are some examples. If you've ever driven past an accident and said, oh, I hope they are okay. Well, it might be just be just one person. You're not gonna say, well, I hope he or her, or I hope she or he is okay. Like, no, you're just gonna say, I hope they are okay. Every teacher got a package delivered to them. You're, we're just talking about one, te each teacher getting a package, but we're gonna use them to be inclusive of all of the different genders of the teachers. Um, and, or if you've ever found a lost item, you might say something like, it looks like they lost something. Well, only one person has lost something, but we're going to use that they as a singular pronoun. So let's practice this again. For this example, it's super important that you understand that this is a sentence from two roads. So Cal is the character who is talking and telling the story. Blank have learned more from her about the bonus army than I've gotten in from the last two months of reading papers. First question we're going to ask ourselves is what is the case of the missing pronoun? Well, this case is subjective. We know that because this is who the, the story is about or who the sentence is about. And we know that it is Cal. What is the antecedent of the missing pronoun? So who is being replaced with a pronoun? Well, Cal, Cal is the one that's telling the story. He is the subject of the sentence and we are replacing the word Cal with a pronoun. We now need to figure out what is the person and number of the antecedent? Well, Cal, we've already talked about, the story of two roads is from his perspective. So Cal is in first, is a first person. And then Cal is only one person, so he's singular. We can then figure out our correct pronoun for the sentence, and it is the pronoun I. Another hint is that they've used the word I've 
later in the sentence, that gives us a little hint that that is the pronoun that we're probably looking for in this sentence. I have learned more. So why might it be important or useful for us to better understand pronouns and the person and number of their antecedent? Why does all of this matter? Well, using the correct pronoun that matches the antecedent person and number, that means that the pronoun is going to be more clear for the reader. The reader is going to better understand who that pronoun is referring to. There's also going to be less of a chance for an unclear reference, so not knowing who the pronoun is referring to. And then it will also make the sentence a lot more clear for the reader as well.